Are you struggling to find leopards in the Kalahari Transfrontier Park? In this video, I'll share 10 top tips that will increase your chances of finding these elusive cats in the Kalahari. Hi, I'm Philia Stain and I'm the safari expert. And yes, I know that first video clip of the two leopards mating seemed way too green for the Kalahari. But in fact, it was filmed just two weeks ago when I visited the park after it had a huge amount of rain in a very short period of time, turning it into a lush paradise. Now, I went to the park with my friend Owen Grobler and in just two weeks, we saw five different leopards. Now, for those of you that don't know, my background is actually in leopard research and there's no other person on earth that spends more time looking for leopards than Owen, including these ghosts that live in the Hoodsbraid Wildlife Estate where both Owen and I stay. Now seeing so many different leopards in one trip had less to do with luck and more with the fact that we combined all our skills and knowledge to increase our chances of seeing these magnificent cats that so many people struggle to find when they visit the Kalahari Desert. So I thought, why not share with you my top 10 tips to find leopards in the Kalahari. Now, before I do so, please remember to check out the description below for any important links and information that I mentioned throughout the video. And if you enjoy it, also consider subscribing to the channel. As always, I've left the most important tip for last, so make sure you watch to the very end. Right, let's start with tip number one. You've got to search in the best areas. Now, over the past 25 years, I've seen leopards right throughout the Kalahari Transfrontier Park, but there are certain areas where my hit rate has been a little bit higher. Now, one of these areas is in that middle section of the Alb Riverbed between Gemsbok Plain Waterhole and Kumkwa Picnic Site. Now, I'm not 100% sure what it is that make leopards like this area so much, but perhaps it's because there are so many camel thorn trees there, or perhaps it's the fact that the riverbed is so narrow, increasing your visibility. There's also a lot of calcrete ridges there, which I'll speak about a little bit later in this video, and the leopards really seem to like that. So make sure you spend some time between Gemsburg Plain and Kampkwa Picnic Site to increase your chances. Another area that's really good for leopards is the southern Norsop, between Tuerifiren and KK Waterhole. I've seen quite a few leopards there over the years. Now when it comes to camps specifically, my two favorite camps for leopards are Erie Careers and Grootkolk Wilderness Camps. Now Erie Careers is great because not only is it very close to that area in the Middle Alp that I just spoke about, but it's also got a waterhole very close to the camp itself. And I've seen leopards drinking there at night on numerous occasions. Grootkolk's a little bit different. I haven't seen leopards on drives around the camp, but I've also seen them drinking at the waterhole just like Erie Careers on numerous occasions. But what makes it different is that my sightings have always been during the daytime. In the wilderness camps, you'll find a little sightings book in your room where the people that stayed there before you will give you an idea of what they saw around camp and also at the camp waterhole. And on a number of different occasions, I realized that there were leopards seen kind of mid-morning or early morning at the camp waterhole. So I actually sacrificed drives or morning drives a few times from Grootkolk and saw leopards coming down to drink at the camp. So my tip here is that if you visit one of these wilderness camps that have a waterhole in front of the camp, check the sightings book and see whether there's some kind of trend of leopards that come down to drink at a specific time of the day. Now it's worth mentioning that unlike Erie Careers, the waterhole at Grootkolk is quite far away from camp. So if you want to get some nice close-up photographs of the leopards that come and drink there, you'll need a lens that's at least 600 millimeters long. And if you don't have one, you can consider renting one from Outdoor Photo in Pretoria, and I'll add a link to their rental department in the description below. Tip number two is get to know the leopards first. Now the best way to do this is to follow a page called the Kalahari Leopard Project on Facebook. Now what happens here is people from all over the world share their photographs taken in the Kalahari and the creators of the group will then go and identify that leopard and place it on a map that shows the movement of that specific animal. So they urge you just to give the date and the location and then with spot pattern analysis they'll identify that animal. Now what's also great is they share all this information in a PDF document that you can download and I'll add the link in the description below. And that then gives you a great idea of which specific leopard you're looking for when you're driving a certain stretch of road. 
So when I leave Tuerafiru and I know I'm looking for the Bocello male or for Ikaya or Itemba, and because it's updated regularly, you also know whether those females have cubs or not. Tip number three, check the latest sightings. Now the best way to do this is to go to another Facebook group called Kalahari Sightings and you have to join and be accepted first before you can check those sightings. Now this is great because people share all their recently taken photographs on this group, sometimes even from within the park and that means you know that those animals were literally seen that morning or the day before. So before I go to Kalahari I'll kind of play around and browse around on that Facebook group a little bit to see what exactly the trends were for the month before my trip. And often you'll see that there's a specific leopard that was seen in a specific area very regularly. And that's the area that I would then target. Tip number four, get some expert help. Now there's no one that knows the park better than the authors of the book Kalahari Self Drive Roots, Roads and Ratings. And they've basically got decades and decades of experience exploring the park and they share all of it in this wonderful book. Now what I love about this book so much is that it literally talks about every single stretch of road between the different waterholes and what it looks like there and what you can expect to see. And that obviously includes a lot of wonderful information about leopards specifically. And as you'll see from the tips to come, I talk about the dunes, the calcrete ridges and the camel thorn trees. And in this book, they'll also focus on those specific features that leopards love so much. It's definitely a book to add to your collection. And the wonderful thing is that you can order it online. And I'll add the link in the description below. Tip number five is to drive slowly and at the right times of the day. Now many people think that desert leopards are very shy, where in fact I've actually noticed that many of them are quite relaxed. And perhaps that's because they spend so much time along the two riverbeds where there's a lot of traffic. The thing that makes them so difficult to spot is the fact that they are extremely well camouflaged in this desert environment. So you can easily drive past them if they just sit still. So rather than racing from one waterhole to the next, rather drive very very slowly and look very carefully for spots sometimes even stopping and looking through your binoculars now in the next three tips i'll actually tell you which parts of the environment you'll be driving through you should scan extra carefully because the leopards love it so much it also helps to drive very early in the morning and late in the afternoon when it's a little bit cooler because that's when leopards are most active. What I have realized though in the Kalahari specifically, leopards do sometimes move around in the middle of the day as well. So the more time you spend out there, the better your chances of finding them. Tip number six is check the dune crests. Now when you drive along the Nosop or the Aub riverbeds, you'll usually be driving along a sandy dune on the one side. And often the dune crest is very high up above you. Now, most of the large predators like leopards, lions and cheetahs love sitting right on top of that dune or walking along that crest. And the reason for this is it just gives them that wonderful elevation to look down to the riverbed where a lot of their prey will spend their time. So when you drive slowly along these dunes, don't only check at the base beside you, but also right at the top and look for spots or unnatural shapes or silhouettes between the tufts of grass because there might just be a leopard looking down at you. Tip number seven, scan the calcrete ridges. Now calcrete ridge is basically a rocky area often found opposite the sandy dunes. And these calcrete ridges are very porous and it leaves a lot of holes and crevices and even little caves in them that the leopards love. Now the reason the leopards love these calcrete ridges so much is because all these crevices provide places where mothers can hide their cubs or where a leopard itself can hide away from the sun or where they can look for prey items like mongooses, hares and even something like an African wildcat. In fact, once on the Dalkeith Loop south of Mata Mata, there's a little calcrete ridge where we found a female leopard kind of walking along it and looking into all these holes and eventually finding, chasing and taking down an African wildcat right in front of us. So slow down whenever you drive alongside a calcrete ridge and look very carefully for spots between all the rocks. Tip number eight look in the camel thorn trees. Now the camel thorn trees are very plentiful along the riverbeds of the Kalahari and the leopards love them. It's a great place to rest and get away from the sun. You can hoist a kill and then eat there in peace and quiet. And it's also a place where cubs love to play jumping from branch to branch. 
One of the challenges though is that the canopies of these camel thorn trees are large and very dense, often making it difficult to see what's happening behind the leaves. So if you find a camel thorn tree close to the road, it's worth slowing down or even stopping and looking very carefully to see whether you can see spots in the middle. Also check very carefully below the camel thorn trees in the deep shade because that's a place where leopards love to lie as well. Tip number nine listen for alarm calls. Now if you've never been to the Kalahari Transfrontier Park you wouldn't know what the alarm call of a springbuck, a wildebeest or a gemsbok sounds like. Not to mention a blackback jackal or a batiat fox which often also alarm when they see a leopard. But what you will see is an animal or a group of animals that stand dead still all facing in one direction with their ears forward and looking distressed and giving some kind of loud call. And that gives you an idea that there's a predator around. Now sometimes you'll scan around and you'll find something small like an African wildcat but that's still a great sighting and other times it'll pay off and you'll spot a leopard. The point is that if you find animals that look distressed and that give alarm calls there's probably a predator around. And then the last and most important tip if you ask me is you've got to chat to other visitors. On our recent trip every morning when we waited at the gate for our permits we would talk to other people to find out what they had seen over the last few days. So kind of like that tip about looking at the sightings group you're now getting sort of very very updated information and it might be someone that tells you about a mother leopard with her cubs that they had seen in a specific area for a few days and that obviously means it's worthwhile going to check there. Or it could be someone that you bump into at a picnic site that said they just found a leopard on a kill earlier that morning definitely worth checking up on. So take the time to talk to people around you, not only in camp or at the gate, but also at the picnic sites or when you pass people on the road, because the best way to find leopards in the Kalahari is to follow up on a sighting that someone else saw very recently. I really hope that these tips help you to find your first leopard in the Kalahari Transfrontier Park. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel and feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below or share with us your top tips of finding leopards in the Kalahari. Also remember to check out the description below for any important links and information.